in the lobby of Financial Peace Plaza. James and Kelly are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good, Dave. Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. Welcome, welcome. Good to have you. Thanks for Where having Where do you guys us. live? We live in North New Jersey. Oh, cool. Very good. In the New York, New York City of, area, huh? Yes, 20 yeah. miles outside. All right, perfect. So you're WOR listeners, I assume. Yes. Cool. So what are you doing in Nashville? We are here uh, for a few things. One thing is we're here to do our debt-free scream. Mm-hmm. And we are also here uh, celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary. Well, congratulations. And, and my wife's birthday. That's well, right. happy birthday. That's cool. We'll just turn this into a Palooza then. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Very cool. Well, congratulations, Thank you two. You. All right. How much debt have James and Kelly from New Jersey paid off? A lot. $120,000. I oh, love it. And how long did that take you? Just about four years. Very good. So what caused you to start this journey to get out of debt four years ago? Well, actually, what happened was uh, we offered uh, Financial Peace University was offered at our church, Liquid Church up in New Jersey. Yeah. And Kelly told me that we were going to make a 13-week commitment during the summer. Well, I didn't tell him how many weeks it was going to be. I just told him I signed us up for a class. <laughs> and he said, you mean every Sunday for the whole summer we're going to sit in a class? I was like, yes. <laughs> oh, goody. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up, uh, we didn't miss a class. And uh, it, it has changed our life like you wouldn't believe. Let's have a debt-free scream. James and Kelly from New Jersey listening on WOR Radio. $120,000 paid off in four years. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt-free! Debt <laughs> I love it, you guys. Hey, let's hear it for James and Kelly. They're actually here today. Uh, it's cool to see so many liquid families finding their way to financial freedom. Um, this is really a series that we've had a goal. It's called In God We Trust. What we're doing is we're saying, you know what? We are learning to live below our means so that we can trust God uh, in our families, our budgets, our marriages, our hearts. I want to welcome you to Liquid. Uh, I'm Pastor Tim. We have all of our campuses joining with us across the state. Would you welcome them too? We're glad you guys are with us. It's awesome to have you. If you're watching online, this is the last week in this series. And then next Sunday, we're starting that new series called This Is Us. Any This Is Us fans here? All right, bring your tissue box. Get ready, okay? I'm excited about that, that series. So if you have a friend who like or family who enjoy watching that show, uh, make sure you invite them. But today I thought, you know what? Last week in On God We Trust, so let's hit one of the most difficult subjects out there, and that is debt, or should I say how to get out of debt. Uh, if you're like me, you live in New Jersey, and you feel the pressure, right, like James and Kelly. We live in one of the most expensive uh, areas or regions of the entire country, and we are one of the most debt-ridden generations in history, right? We grew up with government bailouts, credit downgrades, double-dip recessions, and you may be here today and say, well, wait, wait, wait. Tim, why are we talking about this topic in church? And the answer is because debt is a profoundly spiritual issue. Uh, think of the language that we use even uh, in Christianity. When you become a Christian or a follower of Jesus, we say, Jesus paid the debt of your sin on the cross. At the center of the Lord's Prayer is this request. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In fact, Jesus talked more about the topic of money and our stuff than heaven and hell combined. Think about that. Jesus said you can't serve two masters, both God and money. You'll inevitably hate one of them and love the other. In other words, it's hard to be a servant of Christ when you're a slave to MasterCard. When you are maxed out, when you're bleeding red, living above your limits, it is a stressful way to live. Uh, one family sent me this email. They said, Pastor Tim, in our family, the main cause of stress is our money. Uh, my husband and I made some poor financial choices Years ago, we've carried a huge debt load ever since. Talk about no margin. There's a big pile of overdue bills on our desk that I don't even want to look at. Anybody else have that pile? Right? We've had that one. It's a constant source of tension in our home. And honestly, we feel helpless to dig our way out. Help! Well, that's what we want to give you today. We don't want to just give you help. I want to give you hope. Because God's Word, you're going to be surprised. It is extremely practical on this topic of financial freedom. How do you break out of a cycle of debt? Here's the deal. 
you're sitting next to hundreds of families at your campus in this room, like uh, the gardeners. They're just ordinary people in, in our church who are living in New Jersey, and they feel the same pressures that I feel that you feel trying to make ends meet. But by the power of God, today they are living debt-free because they've taken our summer course called Financial Peace University, which starts in just a couple weeks at a campus near you. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But first, I want to open God's Word. I want to open the Bible and look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. So you can open your Bible or take out your phone. If you have the Liquid Church mobile app, we've got our scripture in there as well as fill in the blank notes. I know a lot of people are like, I, want, I didn't catch that. Can I fill that in? Go to the Liquid Church mobile app. But this is our main scripture. And my prayer today is just that for some of you, this is going to be a game changer. That God is literally going to open your eyes and you're going to say, you know what, this summer is it. This summer is the summer. I am finally getting out of debt and learn to manage money God's way. Because how you handle your finances, it's a big deal in God's eyes. And here in 1 Timothy, this is the Apostle Paul. He wrote a letter to a young guy named anybody? Timothy. Yeah, we'll call him Timmy. He's probably in his 20s or 30s. And uh, Paul gave him this, this counsel in verses 9 and 10. Look what he says. It says, Timmy, here's what I want you to know. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and, uh, what's the word, church? Trap. And into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men and women into ruin and destruction. For the what? Love of money, it's a root of all kinds of evil. I mean, I mean some people, eager for it, they've wandered away from the faith and they have pierced themselves with many, what's that word? Griefs. You can circle that word griefs. Maybe that's the word you'd use to describe your finances, right? I saw some of you, you know, when we said debt, you're like, oh, you just immediately start squirming because you feel that grief. Like, oh no, here's the deal. You're not alone. If you feel grief about your own economy and the debts you're carrying, you're not alone. In fact, you're probably just average. Anybody want to take a guess? The average American, how much credit card debt the average American carries? Anyone want to take a guess? Five, 10, I think it's some said over here. The average American carries $16,000 in credit card debt. So I'm not talking about mortgages. This is just credit cards. And some of you are like, well, finally, I'm above average. <laughs> right? About time. Like that Capital One commercial. What's in your wallet? Well, if you're average, probably a bunch of these, right? And you probably get offers every day in the mail for more free ones. I, I was in college when I got my first credit card. It was a Discover card. Anybody remember Discover card? Might as well call it Debt Discover, okay? I got a, a there was a Discover call, uh, uh, credit card um, representative on our college campus, and I signed up, and he goes, you get a free t-shirt, and I'll give you a $20 credit if you get someone else to sign up too. So I went and found another sucker. Uh, my girlfriend at the time became my wife, Colleen, and she got a debt discover card, and we began ringing it up together, okay? Stupid stuff. I mean, dumb, you know, dinner out, tickets to concerts, shopping at the mall. We spent money we didn't have on stuff we didn't need, and, and it was intoxicating, okay? We, I'll be honest, we were 20 years old, and let me tell you, Discover was like our gateway drug, okay? After that, we discovered MasterCard, Visa, Amex, and like thousands of other college kids in my generation, we went skipping down that road, piling up all this credit card debt and making the minimum monthly payments. And everything seemed fine until our senior year when it hit the fan. Uh, we were broke. Uh, my wife's parents found out that she had almost $7,000 in credit card debt. I had a couple myself. This didn't include school loans. And fortunately, we got jobs right away and figured, well, that'll right our ship. You know, we got married, so we rented an apartment. We got our first car fleece, I mean lease, and uh, we had two incomes. So I thought, well, no problem, right? Wrong. After two years, we were still knee-deep in debt, and we had income problems. In it came, out it goes. We'd, we'd pay off like a little bit over here, a little over here, but then, you know, we'd go on like on summer vacation and like gain it all back. You know, it's kind of like a bad diet. You know, you lose a little, but then you gain it back, right? And by year four of our marriage, we knew something was very wrong. Because here we were, two gainfully employed professional adults with over $20,000 in credit card debt. And it was like this huge weight on our back. 
real felt a lot of shame about it, you know? It was a constant source of stress and tension in our marriage. Some of you know what I'm talking about. If the person in your family who handles the finances, you know, and, uh, and their partner walks in with a bunch of shopping bags from the mall, right? You get all emotional and upset, like, what are you doing, you know, you, what's with you? You break the budget every time. And then they get all emotional, upset, and they're like, why are you always so nutty about money, you know? You're always like, emotional, and you get this, like, vein pops out of your forehead. Why? Because when debt increases, so does your stress level. And Colleen and I lived like that for a long time, limping along, and we discovered you could, you could, when this one came due, you could transfer the balance over to this one, right? <laughs> Credit card roulette, and then just open another one and keep passing on. Here's the secret. Credit card companies don't want you to pay your debt. <laughs> because when you pay your bill and you don't carry a balance, it's like a nightmare for them. That, see, that's how the trap works. Th did you see that? Did you catch the word trap in 1 Timothy 6? Look back at the Bible. You're going to have fresh eyes. Paul writes this. People who want to get rich fall into temptation. And what's the word? Trap. Now, I'm going to teach you a little Greek, okay? The word trap that Paul uses here, the Greek word is pagus, and it actually means an animal trap or a snare. Uh, have you ever seen a bear trap? Anybody ever see, like, actual bear trap used by, like, hunters? They're, very, they're vicious devices, right? Two sets of teeth spring-loaded on either side. And what a hunter or a trapper does is they put a little bit of bait in the middle of the trap, they open the jaws, and then cover it up with leaves. And they just wait for some poor, unsuspecting bear to come and be like, that looks good, and puts his paw on there and snap! This, you know, the trap slams shut, and, and the animal can't get free. That's what Paul is picturing here. The word is pagus. It means an animal trap or a snare. Now, I wish when I was in college that I had that picture in my head. Because when that guy came onto our campus and said, hey, college kid who has student loans and no discernible source of income, come here. I, I want to give you a card with 0% interest and cash back on your purchases. You're making money. <laughs> I would have said, no, 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 no. I, 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 I would have pictured this. I went out and got a trap this week. Now, it's not a bear trap because Amazon won't sell that to you. <laughs> but I got a raccoon trap. This, this is a raccoon trap that we got from, no kidding, the Redneck Supply Company. That is literally, I'm not making, it's not a joke. Don't email me. It was called the Redneck Supply. But this is a raccoon trap, and it's loaded. It is, this right now is fully loaded. It's spring back, so there's kind of this fun element of danger. Will Tim lose his finger, okay? And I was like, let's just put a card in the middle. And if I were in college, what would have, it would have been so helpful because I would have, you know, it would have been like, oh, look at that. <laughs> that this is a gold card. <laughs> it, the, it's Amex. Am, Am oh, and it's Sky Miles. I'm getting free Air Miles when I buy stuff. <laughs> but I would have known better. I would have remembered what God said in 1 Timothy, that this is a trap. That if you take the bait on this, you know what happens? Parents, if you got a teenager or a college student, have them lean in on this. This is what happens when you say, oh, that looks very good. I think I'll actually just. People who want to buy stuff they don't need with money they don't have fall into a what? A trap. And many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men and women into ruin and destruction. For the love of money, it's, it's just a root of all kinds of pain. Some people eager for stuff, they've, they've actually wandered away from faith, and they've pierced themselves with many griefs. Debt is dangerous, debt is painful, and debt is a trap. It's spring-loaded for all of us. Every day, 75,000 Americans open up their mail, and they've received pre-approval for a new visa or a MasterCard. 75,000 people every day. And for a lot of us, this is the beginning of the downward spiral. How easy is it to get credit in America? Well, if you're normal, you open up your mail, and every week they tell you five, ten, twenty thousand dollars. It's been pre-approved for you to spend. All you gotta do is just sign the agreement, and we'll send you a free gift, even just to get you started. Banks basically beg you to borrow from them. Why? Because they are savage hunters who profit from your lack of self-control. If you carry two thousand dollar balance at about like average nineteen percent interest. Your first statement will say, don't pay $2,000, pay $75, minimum pay. Why? Because that's how we make our killing, by you defaulting. Just make the minimum monthly payment LPS and pay exorbitant interest, 
And if you just pay 75 bucks, what you don't realize is the first 33 is all interest. So you go on charging stuff and dig an even deeper hole, and guess what? It is a trap that few people ever break free from. Citibank has actually publicly declared that people who use their credit card buy 25% more than if they had paid cash. Just by nature of just swiping because it's so convenient. So in other words, they're banking on your overspending and inability to control your impulses. So here we are at the start of summer. Understand, ladies. MasterCard, Citibank, they, they know what you're thinking right now. They know you're like, summer's here. I need a new summer bag. Maybe some strappy heels. Uh, you know, pedicure, my feet are going to be out, you know. They know that when you, you know, you feel sad or nervous, a little retail therapy, right? Now, men, don't judge, all right? Gu guys, we don't typically blow out on clothes and stuff. We prefer gadgets, right? Some, some of you are like, man, I, I'm not even listening. That's just a cool-looking flat-screen TV, Tim, you got up there, right? Uh, and, you know, I, you know this, this thing is, this, this is like, listen to me, listen to me. Let's just, can I just show you how the debt trap works in real life? Let's just, you guys know what's on. What's on right now? The NBA finals. And some of you are like, I would love to watch LeBron in high def on the big screen, you know? So let's pretend you go to Best Buy. And you're like, I want a TV like that one I see at church. 70-inch flat screen. Some of you, I've seen you salivating over this on Sundays. Let's just, all right? And I actually, <laughs> I actually had a guy who <laughs> came up around Super Bowl, and he goes, hey, Tim, I'd love to see the big game on the big screen. Could I borrow the, the television? <laughs> and I was like... Bro, this is Jesus' TV. <laughs> no, can't borrow, go get your own, man, kind of. But good news, good news, Best Buy's running a special. 70-inch TV, surround sound speakers, HDMI, all the trimmings for $4,999.99. I know, some of you are like, ah, that's crazy, I'm not good, you can't afford that, but wait, 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 it's summer. So it's on sale for the low, low price of $3,699. That is almost $1,300 in saving. It's a sin not to buy it, okay? You're like looking at it, and you're starting to think about what wall it would look good on, but still a little steep. So the salesman says, well, you know, it, it, today is pretty special. You could just open a Best Buy courtesy card. What does that mean? It's our courtesy. It's our gift to you. You don't have to actually even pay for it. You don't make any payments for a whole year. And you're like, there's, there's got to be catch. No catch. Zero payments on the card and zero interest. And you're like, I am blessed and highly favored, man. <laughs> I, I got a puny TV. How can I? You take the bait. Now watch. Check this out. So you go to cashier, and, and she's like, you want us to install it, you know, on your living room wall? And you're like, oh, oh yeah, that's a, a little bit of a nightmare. I don't, you know, how much is it? $369 installation fee, $349. That's it. And you're like, you know what? I'd probably do that damage on my drywall. All right. Sure, that's fine. And she's like, and you want the insurance, right? And you're like, insurance for what? Well, typically electronics here break in the first 18 months. We will replace the entire thing. It's actually the wise thing to do. All right, I'll take the three-year protection plan. That's $649 at Best Buy. But insurance is a good thing. You're still saving, right? Now watch this. Add the tax, $347. You got to pay Uncle Sam. And now the grand total is $5,137. They're like, oh, man, that's too much. But they're, uh, you know what? Just charge it to my Best Buy courtesy card. No interest, no payments for a year. LeBron, here we come. Now get ready. This is where the jaws slam shut. What's the danger, some of you are asking? Like, you don't even pay it for a year. Well, here's what I want you to imagine. That year goes by very quickly. <laughs> and suddenly the balance is due. Guess what happens next? Something supernatural. It's a miracle. On that day, time goes backwards. Because you fail to pay off the entire balance that day, the credit card interest is calculated from the first day you made the purchase. In other words, when the calendar hits 12 months and one day, you immediately accrue a whopping 25% interest on your courtesy card. Now watch this. If you just make the minimum monthly payment from here on out, guess what you'll wind up paying for this TV over the life of your sweet deal? 29,811 bucks. This is where I do what I call the one-handed clap. Oh, oh, oh. Huh. Who, who would pay $30,000 for a television, right? Of course not. Now listen, that is the debt trap. In fact, this is crazy. If, if, you just, if that happened to you, and then you just made the minimum monthly payments, do you know how long it would take you to pay off your TV? 
55 years and seven months. In other words, you will be dead, probably, okay? Your funeral will be in high def. But you're going to take that sucker with you to the grave. Listen to God's word. People who want a lot of stuff (laughs) fall into a trap in many foolish and harmful desires that plunge families into ruin and destruction. Guys, that's how the debt trap works. If you look at your finances, you wonder, how did I get here? This is the pagus that Paul's talking about. It's not just electronics, right? We strap ourselves with clothes, car leases, mortgages we can't afford. It's the American way, and it's a trap, as Admiral Akbar would say, all right? That's for you Star Wars fans. You're welcome, okay? It's a trap. It's actually no laughing matter, especially for millennials. According to USA Today, 20% of people who file bankruptcy in 2018, 20% of those people will be college students. I want you to think about that for a minute. One out of every five people who will file bankruptcy this year, one of the most devastating things that can happen to a person financially are college students. In other words, somewhere along the way, we're teaching our kids that that's just a way of life. I mean, spending money you don't have, it's just part of being American. Where did you get that idea from? If you've ever driven into New York City, then you've probably seen the national debt clock. It sits on 6th Avenue, it updates our nation's debt in real time. When this clock went live in 1989, the the, the national debt was a little under $3 trillion. Uh, In 2018, they actually had to add an extra digit because that's when uh, it went over 10 trillion. That was 2008, I should say, sorry, they added another digit. But today, 2018, today's national debt has now ballooned to over 19 trillion dollars. Now, I know that's a hard to grasp, right? Like, hey, 18, 19 trillion, whatever, right? So let me put this in terms that you and I can relate to. Are you ready for a reality check? If the U.S. government was a family, they would be making $58,000 a year, spending $75,000 a year with $327,000 in credit card debt. This is the American way. Newsflash, America's broke. See, we just buy this idea of max it out, spend past your limits. And Paul's like, people who live like this, they pierce themselves with many griefs. Debt causes tremendous pain and heartache. I know it did for Colleen and I for a long time. It it makes you feel like hopeless. Like how how are we ever gonna get back to zero with these numbers? Uh, Savings, you're like, I'd love to save for our kids retirement, but like, what are we gonna do? So you kind of push it out of mind. Personally for us, the breakthrough moment came when we were, um, we were reading the Bible, did a little study on this, and God's word kind of hit us like a tongue of bricks. It was this verse in Proverbs 22 that changed it for us. I want to say, read this together. Can we read this out loud? The borrower is what? Slave to the lender. And go ahead, underline slave. Every time you sign up for any kind of debt, you are surrendering a huge piece of your freedom. In Bible times, if you couldn't pay your debts, you were sold into slavery. That's literally the majority of, of, of slaves were because they couldn't pay their debts. You know, I saw this interview with a credit card executive, and he was asked to describe their ideal customer. And I was amazed, like, how brazen he was. He said, our ideal customer is somebody who doesn't pay their bill ever on time. <laughs> and I catch this. So the entire system is based on bad faith. In other words, they have faith in your inability to pay. They have faith in your inability to to control your impulses, to spend past your limit and trap you in a cycle of indebtedness. And you wind up a slave to credit instead of freed by Christ. See, folks, money is not the problem. Money's not the issue. You notice that? Money's not bad. God gave it to us to provide what we need. Did you see the distinction Paul makes here in 1 Timothy? Look at verse 10. He doesn't say money's bad. He says what? For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil and trouble. In other words, the love of our stuff and all that it brings, the passion for I got to have bigger, better, more, it is the root, the spiritual root of all kinds of evil. Remember, Jesus said, you can't serve both God and money. You'll be a slave to one and neglect the other. You'll pierce yourself with grief. You will miss out on the life of freedom and joy that God designed you for. I mean, think about all the freedom you give up, right? Debt obligates you to earning pressure. If you're in debt, when you're nostril deep, any disruption to your income is life-threatening. You better have two jobs. You better never miss a day of work. Uh, debt steals your joy. I mean, how, 
you, know, you ever notice that? Like you can't even enjoy anything. How do you enjoy a nice dinner out or you're like on vacation and you're eating out and somewhere deep in your conscience you're like, oh, we probably shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> oh, it's delicious. We shouldn't be buying that, you know. Not in the financial condition we're in and your relationships suffer. You know what the number one cause of divorce is in America? Money problems. Debt steals your joy and it cripples your ability to be generous. So many people want to be generous. They want to be generous with God, but you can't tithe. You want to be generous with others. When, when you're in hawk, it's like impossible to help others. So a family member has an issue or a friend is in a crisis and you're like, oh man, I want to, I want to help them. I'd love to do that, but guess what? Ain't there to give. It's like, I'm broke. Do you get it? it it's, there's this huge tension to be a follower of Jesus Christ and have this heart full of compassion, but a wallet that's been emptied by debt. That's why I really believe the devil takes MasterCard. Because in the end, it's not about what's in your wallet. It's about what's in your heart. You can't serve two masters. You can't be a slave to Visa and serve God at the same time. It is a trap. And if I just say, as, as your pastor, I am like just so grieved by how many families in our country and our church fall for this. And so this morning, I'm not, I want to shame you or anything. Don't, don't feel shame. We're, we're all in the same boat here. I want to give you hope because some of you are like, man, Tim, you, I got it. Is there a way out? Yes. Is freedom possible? Yes. Folks, believe me, no matter where you are, there is hope. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's hope. There's hope. No matter how hopeless it feels, God has more for you. No matter how hopeless you feel, there's a way out. It takes discipline. It takes hard work, and you got to live counterculture. It actually takes being transformed by the renewing of your mind. you got to retrain your brain to manage money God's way. But God gives it to us here in 1 Timothy. Would we just read on? Because God, God gives amazing answer here. Look at verses 6 through 8. I want to read them together. Paul writes, but godliness with, what's the word? Contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we ain't taking anything out of it. <laughs> But if we have, let's see, uh, food, clothing, the basics, we'll be, what's the word? Content with that. See, from God's perspective, debt is a spiritual issue. It's about the heart. The Bible says the reason we take on debt is not because we lack money, it's because we lack contentment. To be able to say, enough, I have enough. To be satisfied with what you have. You know what? My house is big enough. I don't need more stuff to be happy. Contentment is a spiritual issue, and it's a difficult thing in our world. That's why it would drive so many of our impulse purchases. Most of the time, it's not the product, but what the product is promising us, right? We think if I get a bigger TV, my friends will be impressed when I show them the big game. Oh, man, he's got, right? If I get a new outfit and, you know, strappy heels this summer, the guys are going to flock to me, right? You know, if I have a bigger house, I will be a bigger person. So we use money and stuff to meet spiritual needs that God never intended them to satisfy. St. Augustine, he actually had this amazing picture. He said there is a, a God-shaped hole in our, each of our hearts. It's God-shaped. In other words, God alone can fit in it and fill it. But men and women spend a lifetime using sex and power, money, trying to fill that hole. The problem is the hole is in the shape of God, not a 70-inch flat screen. Can I get it in here, right? And when you recognize that true contentment comes from God alone, from the giver of life, not the gifts in your life, then things change. This is when you get that inner peace that begins pervading your spirit, and you're no longer driven by a spirit of consumption, but by a spirit of, what's it say? Contentment. When you're content with what God's given you, the home you live in, the car you drive, the job you have, you stop craving more in that spirit of affluenza <laughs> breaks, but it's hard. Paul reasons, he actually reasons, this is fascinating, he says, um, you guys realize, we bought nothing into the world, and we ain't taking anything out of it. Like, you know, this all goes back in the box, right? <laughs> you know, on the roads nowadays, you, you know, you see, I don't know if you're a car person, I'm not really like a car person. Uh, my son is, my son like loves uh, Tesla's, like that's his thing. He likes learning about I mean, kids, you know, 14 years old, right? And he's like, Dad, I'm going to have a Tesla when I'm older. I'm like, I ain't going to college. Uh, you know, <laughs> pay for that. Uh, but you see a lot of luxury cars nowadays, you know, with the, the leather seats, the smart screens, self driving GPS. Let me show you a picture of a vehicle I have never seen on the Garden State Parkway. Are you ready? Uh, you will never see a hearse 
with a roof rack on it. <laughs> You'll never see a dead person go to their funeral and like, get all my stuff and strap it on because I'm taking it all with me, right? Paul's like, when you're in the, when you're in the car, <laughs> all this is going in the ground with you. He says, so just let me boil it down. If we have food and clothing, the basics, we will be, let's say the word, content with that. Simple living. Simple living. And can you believe it? The Bible came up with that. Living below your means, very difficult for our generation. Because the line between needs and wants is very blurry, isn't it? Right? I mean, food, most of the degree, basic need. A grande caramel macchiato with a scone from Starbucks every morning, maybe not so much, right? Transportation is a need for most of us. Um, a beamer with Bluetooth and satellite radio, not the only option, right? Though it may feel like it is from watching television and keeping up with the Joneses. P.S. The Joneses are broke. <laughs> the truth is this. Financial freedom is not a matter of money, but of your lifestyle. The culture will tell you as your income increases, so should your lifestyle. As you increase your salary, increase your consumption. So if God's enabled you to earn $40,000, you get a raise to $50,000. You're like, great, I can sign and get my first apartment. You raise from $50,000 to $75,000. Great, I'm going to buy my first house. Double it to, to one fifty. dollars Then it's like, we're going to build a house from scratch. I've always wanted granite countertops, right? And if you're six figures, you start thinking about, you know what, maybe a second vacation home. I've heard that's a wise investment. And it, it never ends. It never ends, guarantee. Guess what, guys? I know people who are making six figures who are so maxed out and so maxed out with stress because they live with zero margin. And the level of spending and stress is unsustainable because it's hard to scale back when you've upgraded your lifestyle. Just ask Rick and Cecilia. Um, they're here today. Rick and Cecilia are a married couple at Liquid. They're sitting in the seats you're sitting in, and their story is amazing. It's a normal story in America. They had significant debt, but it wasn't just damaging their family financially, but actually relationally. It was a huge source of tension in their marriage with the spiritual root behind it. But, and for years, they'll just tell you, they were drowning in debt until God stepped in. They signed up for our summer course, Financial Peace University, and that's when Rick and Cecilia discovered the way out. Watch this. Well, ever since I was 18, I've known debt. That's all I've known. I took out my first credit card when I was 18, and my, I financed my first car when I was 19. Nobody taught me how to budget. Like, nobody had ever taught me about uh, personal finance. I remember feeling a lot of emptiness. I remember that I thought shopping and my addiction to shopping would heal that emptiness that I felt in my heart. I used credit cards to fund our lifestyle. We took vacations. We, um, I shopped for the latest bag. I wanted the latest gadget. And um, it just, I didn't realize that I, we racked up $50,000 worth of credit card debt. I was the wife that would leave shopping bags in the car because I didn't want him to see how much money I was spending. I just knew that I just couldn't continue living this facade of looking rich, but in the inside, I just felt so poor. It's hard for me to express the, I guess, aggravation that was building inside of me. I would see that we were living paycheck to paycheck almost because the amount of spending that that occurred up to that point we were definitely not on the same page we had separate bank accounts um, everything was separate it was almost like living in a roommate's environment the weight of debt was just really putting a strain on our marriage i didn't want to lose him because of the debt my best friend had told me about FPU. I told Rick about it. And I said, you know what? I trust her because she wouldn't want to tell us to do something that would be bad for us. And I said, we've always been a team. So if it's something she feels that we should do, I jumped right on board with it. We started out with about $185,000 worth of debt. Since um, starting FPU, we've paid off $100,000 worth of debt. You know, we could see the light at the end of the tunnel, and um, this class has just given us so much hope. One of the teachings I remember was putting God first and tithing. I remember when they brought that up, I looked at the recordings like, how am I supposed to tithe and give the first, fr first fruits to God when I don't even think we have them? And I realized that it's not about the money, it's about our heart. 
and that's what he's looking for. So if you're able to give your heart to God and that trust, he'll take care of everything. I mean, we're so much better on the same page spiritually, emotionally, financially, and our marriage has just grown closer and closer. I mean, it's just, I can't even express it in words how happy I am from where I saw we were at, heading down a road that I thought we were gonna be splitting up to actually becoming closer than I could ever have imagined. Every time someone asks me, like, how are we able to pay off so much debt, I always encourage them to um, look into taking Financial Peace University. If I could do it and I was like the worst like spender, <laughs> then I think anybody could. Can we thank Rick and Cecilia? That's an amazing story, isn't it? That's amazing. I want you to think about this, right? I mean, God not only saved their finances, he saved their marriage. So guys, understand, there is hope. If you're here today, you're struggling financially, just, just hear our heart as a church. We don't want something from you. We want something for you, and that is financial freedom. And that's why we offer Financial Peace University in the summer. It's not a 13-week class anymore. We knocked it down to nine weeks in which we will teach you biblical principles of money management. It's based on a curriculum developed by Dave Ramsey. You know this bald guy? You guys ever hear him? He's on the radio, on Fox sometimes. He's the best-selling author of Total Money Makeover. And really, this class is designed to teach you all the tools that you never were learned in school, right? Like actually how to write out a budget, how to systematically pay off your debts, including student loans, it is possible. Uh, how to move to an envelope system. You saw Cecilia there actually paying cash instead of credit for food, clothes, entertainment needs. Parents, listen to this. We will teach you how to systematically save for college and for retirement and actually leave a legacy for your children's children. This class is so practical. It has been life-changing for hundreds of families at Liquid who've, who've taken it. Let me just, uh, just listen to this, guys. I just want to share with you a track record of success here. This is incredible. I'm so proud of you guys. Since we started offering FPU eight years ago, Liquid families have now eliminated, I mean totally erased, you know how much money? $2.1 million in credit card debt. That's freedom. Give a hand to those of you who have made extremely disciplined choices. And here's the deal, the start of the summer is a perfect time to start up. That's why we are beginning classes in a couple of weeks. We're doing it at three campuses. Um, we're gonna offer one in the north in Parsippany at our, our main uh, kind of broadcast campus. We have one in the south in Middlesex County and then we're gonna offer a class right in the middle in Essex County because we want all campuses to have access to this. How do you sign up for Financial Peace University? Take out your phone, okay? You can sign up for everything at this church on our mobile app. Have you noticed? We're moving everything to the mobile app. It's where you can sign up. Everything's free, it's free okay? Uh, to get, just download it at the Google Play or whatever it is where you get a free app from, and you can sign up there. If you're like, I don't have a phone, good for you, you're saving money. <laughs> you can sign up online at liquidchurch.com. You'll just see the FPU icon like this. The classes, some of them are on Friday nights. I think we're going to offer some on Sunday afternoons. It starts like the second or third week of June, depending on location. Nine weeks long, runs through the summer. And guys, this could be life-changing for some of you. It really could. I mean, think of Rick and Cecilia. Think of James and Kelly. This could be your next step as a single adult, right? Actually lay a foundation for your future. If you just got married, this is how you get your house in order where you don't make bonehead mistakes like Colleen and I did for 10 years. And if you have kids, this is how you leave a legacy. We're following Jesus into financial freedom. Freedom's a big theme in the Bible. It says in Galatians, it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Now that's talking spiritual, but I believe there's a financial implication. So I want to encourage you to take your first step towards freedom. You will be done by August and on the road to being debt free. I mean, can you imagine next summer? What would it be like? What would it mean to you? What would it mean to your family if at this time, Next summer, I'm going to try to do this without losing my fingers. You pried open the jaws. Still got them. Okay. Uh, you, you pried open the jaws of that trap. And how liberating would that feel to your family? If you learn to budget with breathing room <gasps> between your income and expenses, something incredible happens. You know what happens? If your car breaks down, you don't. You just pay cash for the tires. With margin, you can recover life and joy in the freedom God designed you for. Remember, debt's a spiritual issue. Guys, you don't need more money. It's about needing less to live on. 
It's about breaking our heart's appetite for bigger, better, faster, more, and replacing it with a spirit of contentment. Because the Bible says godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. It's everything. And FPU is going to give you these very practical tools. Uh, I'll close with this. You guys may wonder, like, how did Rick and Cecilia get, you know, they retired $100,000 in debt. James and Kelly, 120, are like, you know, what's the magic? Is it like you get a magic wand and it's like, poof, gone? No. It's hard work, but there are strategies. There's things you just don't know. One of the, with them that we're going to teach you in FPU, I'll just show this in the closing couple minutes. Go back to our beauty here, right? Our 70-inch Best Buy miracle. <laughs> the trap behind this Best Buy flat screen was the snowballing interest, right? When you don't make payments, it goes back to the original date of the purchase and you're sunk. Debt snowballs. The way into debt is the way out of debt. You've got to snowball your way out. And one of the tools we're going to teach you is called the debt snowball. Here's what you do. If you've got a bunch of debts, you actually start not with the biggest, but the smallest debt you have. In your notes, I gave examples of a list of like several debts starting with Best Buy, okay? Just a sample, right? Let's say you owe $450 to Best Buy, and again, your minimum payment is $50. bucks. you have probably got one of these on your credit cards. You don't make the minimum payment. That makes no dent. That's the pagus. That's the trap. Here's where you start. In FPU, we will teach you how to find $200 to begin. And you may be like, man, I'm broke, dude. <laughs> where am I going to get $200 from, okay? Good question. I want you to think of your extras. That morning latte, right? You go to St. Arbucks, you pay your $5 tithe every morning, right? That's $150 a month for coffee. Coffee you rent, by the way. You don't buy coffee. You understand that? You rent it for about, you know, 20 minutes, and then out it's gone, okay? That's kind of... <laughs> Same with beer. I don't, right? Cut your cable, right? You're like, what would I watch on my, you know, flat screen? Just yeah, do what you got to do. Cut Netflix. Cut the gym membership that you don't go to, you know. Do whatever you got. Stop eating out, okay? Find $200 a month because what you do with that $200 may change future generations. Here's what you do. You take that $50 and you add that $200 you found. And you pay back, not 50, but you pay back $250, and within a matter of two months, bye-bye, Best Buy, do not go in that store again. Now watch, you take that money you just budgeted, and you let it start to snowball against the next debt. Say you owe Target $30 a month. Some of you have that addiction to Target, right? <laughs> you take that 30, now watch, and you add it to the 250, meaning you're going to pay Target 280 a month. Guess what? In two months, Target's gone, bye-bye, and your snowball's getting bigger. Then say your third debt is to your, you know, your mom and dad. Maybe your parents like, loaned you money for an apartment or something. You're paying your parents back 200 bucks a month. We're going to take that 200, that, uh, that 280 that we had just freed up, right? Because we don't have to pay Best Buy and Target. We're going to add it, and we're going to pay back mom and dad 480 a month. And they're going to say, are you doing something illegal? What it, what, <laughs> where is this coming from? And guess what? Right now, mom and dad are gone in a few months. And then you take it to the next series of debts, smallest to largest your visa, your car, your school loans. Suddenly, your finances are snowballing in reverse. See, the way into debt shows you the way out of debt. Now, that's just one tool. Now, catch this. This is what kind of fun. If you just made the minimum monthly payments on this little list of bills I put in your notes, how long do you think it would take you to pay this list off, okay? It's just an average list, right? The answer is 10 years. It would take you 10 years. That's assuming you buy nothing else, by the way. <laughs> But if you do the debt snowball we teach you in FPU, you know how long it would take you? 21 months. 21, less than two years, and you are completely debt-free. That means that's 99 months of you not paying interest, but instead you are saving. Now imagine this. Imagine if you take that last payment you made. It's about 1100 a month you no longer owe. Imagine if you just invested that, you know, for those 99 months. At 12%, you know what? At the end of that period, you know how much you would have in your savings? $186,000 in New Jersey, guys, that's enough to buy a garage, <laughs> all right? I'm, it can happen, people, I'm just telling you, all right? The way in is the way out. Debt buried you. Guys, you can do this, amen? Our church is here to help you, all right? What I've just shown you, this is a strategy we're going to teach you in FPU. It's, we're going to give you a structured plan for managing money, writing out your budget, and then most importantly, this is kind of fun, we're going to teach you how to perform Plastic surgery. You know what I'm talking about? Remember these cards, right? Okay. Okay. You remember the cards? 
We are gonna, we, one of the things we do in FPU is we have a little plastic surgery party. We take our credit cards and we say, in Jesus' name, get behind me, devil, okay? So it's going to be a great time. I want to encourage you, wherever you are, imagine being debt-free next summer. Can you imagine adding your debt to that $2.1 million that our families have gotten out of? You can do it. I know because Colleen and I did. With God's help, guys, we eliminated that $20,000 of stupid debt that we dragged around for our first 10 years of marriage. We now have an emergency fund. We're saving for our kids' college. We're saving for our retirement. And we've actually been able to increase our giving to not just the church, but outreaches to, to building Christ's kingdom every single year. We still struggle living where we do, right? We, we work two jobs. We juggle a mortgage. We're trying to raise two kids in a consumer culture that constantly says, bigger, better, faster, more. But we're finally winning. And we want your family to win too. We don't want something from you. We want something for you. What do we want? Financial freedom. And ultimately spiritual freedom in Christ. Because you will no longer be a slave to the lender, but a slave of Jesus Christ. Money does not own you. God owns you. Amen? In this church, we don't trust in Visa. In God, we trust. Would you say that with me, church? In God, we trust. Give him a praise, God. Guys, give him a praise. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You can do this, all right? Let's pray together. Let's pray. Father, I'm excited about all the families who are going to take this step of faith. And Lord, they're going to change, you're going to change a legacy, Lord, that they're building. Father, I thank you for Rick and Cecilia, uh, for James and Kelly, for the hundreds of families who you have led into the freedom and rest that you promised, Jesus. But I pray right now, Lord, um, thank you, first off, just for your word. It's so practical, God. Uh, it isn't written like 5,000 years ago. It has nothing to do with modern day. It's so practical in how to live a life of freedom and faith. Father, I pray for those who sign up for FPU. Would you do a miracle, Lord, in their life? Would they have a testimony of your provision, Father, as they take this step of faith? Father, give us um, great confidence in you. We thank you for providing for all of our needs, and we ask that the freedom that comes would bring glory to our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Everyone said together, amen. amen.